Okay, it looks like we are now live. So welcome everyone to another exciting student zone session here at Microsoft Build. Before we get started, I want to remind you of the code of conduct for all of our digital events during Build. Please continue to keep this code of conduct in mind for this event and for any other sessions that you attend throughout the Build conference. Now I'd like to introduce our wonderful presenters, April and Chloe, to talk about DIY tech for BFFs with the Misty robot. April and Chloe, please take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. I am here today with a special guest, Yay. Misty, and I also have my BFF here. Let's give a round of applause for April, April and her Misty. Woo! Hi, everyone. How are you doing? I brought my lovely Misty here along with me as well. <laughs> I love that you are you're kind of matching with the white here. It's almost like you you coordinated your your outfits today for build. Well, you know how we do. <laughs> <laughs> how has build been so far for you and Misty? Things are going pretty well. Um, I'm excited to be here this year. I did get a chance to sneak a little bit over to the student zone last year. Did some live coding with Scott with Python, but this year I'm here doing JavaScript with Misty. Yeah, and last year we had a bunch of fun. You were working very adjacent to the student zone. So I remember you snuck over because the student zones where all the fun is. So tell us about your fashion today. If you're not following April on Twitter, her handle is Vogue and Code. Um, she has a background in fashion. So tell us about this outfit and then I'll share my accessories as well. <laughs> yeah, so this is probably one of my most favorite dresses that I own. And I figured, you know what, I'll wear it for you all today because today is special. Special, but what about you, Chloe? So today, of course, I am wearing my robot sweater, and then um, I have my kind of little techie earrings here that kind of look like robot wires. I'll tweet out a picture of those later. But it has been such a fun build so far. We've had so many things from DIY terrariums. We've had really cool, you know, beginner courses. So what's really cool about this project is, April, you didn't know that much JavaScript before programming your Misty in JavaScript. So what was that like learning a whole new language in preparation to code a robot? It was an experience, I would say. Python is my number one language, but with Misty, I had the opportunity to exercise what I've learned just last year, honestly, with JavaScript. And I would say it's been a pretty approachable experience. So, so I'm excited. Those of you who maybe are thinking, who are these two strangers? Why do they have robots? Why are they here? Why am I listening to them? Um, we'll give you a little bit of background on us. So April and I um, actually, we met at a conference um, many years ago um, that uses a technology we'll be using today. We'll get that in, into that a little bit called Twilio, spoiler alert. Um, but April and I work as cloud advocates here at Microsoft. So I work specifically with the academic team, teaching students all about the cloud and ways to get started um, with different Microsoft products. April, tell us a little bit about the really, really cool things that you're working on. Yes, yeah, so I work with the spatial computing team and that really, ex that really encompasses a lot of what's happening within extended reality. And so extended reality is going to be an umbrella term for augmented reality, mixed reality, and virtual reality. So doing way cool, awesome stuff with devices such as the HoloLens 2, for example, creating some things in VR as well. And I spend a lot of my time learning and creating content so that way people like you all that are interested in learning can try these cool things out at home as well. Very cool. So are you going to have to, we'll, we'll have to make a little kind of mini VR device for Misty, I'm thinking. Maybe we of can course. make a little accessory for her. <laughs> 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 All right, well, should we get started? Should we dive into our slides and start showing these, these lovely students and folks at home how they can get started with Misty? Yep, I'm all set and ready. Amazing. All right, everyone. So here's the agenda today for this session. First, we're going to go over what we'll be making. And then from there, we'll introduce you to Misty so you can learn more about who she is. After that, we're going to take a look at the Azure Cognitive Speech Service um, Azure Cognitive Service is speech service, and that's one of the tools that we've used for what we've programmed Missy to do today for the session. 
After that, we're also going to take a look at Twilio Programmable SMS. Chloe did hint towards that we'll be using that today for the session, so we'll take a look at how that works. We'll then head into a demo so you can actually see what we've programmed Misty to do. Afterwards, we'll take a look at some resources that you can follow to get started with not just Misty, but also Azure Cognitive Speech Service, as well as with Twilio. And then finally, we will end with a Q&A Feel free to submit your questions throughout the entire presentation. We will try to answer them then, but we will also answer them live here during the Q&A. Amazing, and if you have any special dance moves or requests for Misty, I'll take a look at the chat and I'll try to do some things behind the scenes and see if we can get it working. <laughs> awesome, so let's go over what we'll be making. So what's going to happen today is Misty is going to take a picture of me and send that to Chloe's phone. So exactly how will that happen? Well, first, I'm going to say a command and that command will be take photo. That utterance will be sent to the cloud via Azure Cognitive Services speech service. And what we're going to do is use speech to text to transcribe that utterance into text. Once we have that string, we've written logic to, comp to compare whether that string is equal to the string um, send photo or take photo. And then if that is true, then we will invoke Misty skill to actually take that photo. And then from there, that photo is going to be uploaded to Imgur. Imgur then will give us back a media URL that we'll use when we insert it into our Twilio message. And then from there, that message will go to Chloe's phone. So who is Misty? So Misty is an autonomous locomotive platform robot. So although she's pretty stationary here on, as you've seen on my screen, and you may have seen her in the background on Chloe's camera, she can actually move around on the floor as well. There are plenty of things that she can do. I've even seen her sing with Chloe, for example, and she did a phenomenal job doing that. What's great about Misty is that she is ready out of the box for developers to build skills, which is great because that makes her approachable for a variety of skill sets. In addition to that, there's more that Misty can do with third party offerings. So, for example, today we'll be using Azure as well as Tulio. Now, if you want to learn more about Misty, you can visit MistyRobotics.com. Now let's talk about Azure Cognitive Services Speech Service, as I've mentioned it a couple of times so far. So Azure Cognitive Services Speech Service, there are four different tools, if you will, that you could use within speech services. The first is going to be speech to text. Then we have text to speech. The next one is speech translation. And then the fourth one, which is in preview at the moment, is speech recognition. Now, what's really great about speech service is that there is no machine learning expertise required, which makes this really great for anyone that's ready to, to get started trying to use some of these services on their own. Now, for our particular skill that we've taught Misty, we're using speech to text. And what's going to happen is that audio will be transcribed to text in real time. What's cool about this is that it does support 30 or plus more than 30 languages. And so even though we're using English in this particular session, you can use a lot more beyond just that. Now you can do your transcription by capturing audio from either a microphone, you can read from a stream, or you can access audio files. And then finally, you can also tailor language models with custom speech, which is a pretty cool feature. And I would suggest taking a look at that in our documentation as well. And we'll share a link to the documentation at the end of the session. Now let's get into what Twilio Programmable SMS is. So Twilio Programmable SMS is a REST API, and with that, you can send and receive text messages globally. So what's happening is that Twilio is going to call a webhook, which sends a message to the receiver's phone using Twilio's markup language, also known as TWML. Now for this particular skill that we've taught Misty, we're actually going to send an MMS. And the difference between the two is that the SMS is going to be used if you're sending text messages back and forth. So just strictly text, whereas an MMS enables you to send multimedia. So in our case, we're sending a picture and therefore that's going to be media that needs to be sent. 
Now you can learn more about Twilio Programmable SMS by visiting twilio.com slash SMS. If you do sign up with Twilio, you will receive a credit so that way you can try out any of their APIs that they have available. Within their documentation, there is instructions on how you can actually use MMS. So definitely check that out. And also they have a really cool platform called Twilio Quest that I would highly, highly suggest checking out. You might notice that uh, one of their characters on there, Cedric, looks just like Misty. Oh yes, there's a little Misty cameo in there. I'm always thinking of Misty whenever I'm uh, looking at Twilio Quest. So while April's getting uh, her screen share live, I actually programmed some really fun things for Misty to do um, in the meantime. So uh, Misty can do a bunch of different things. You can change the rotation of her head. You can change um, the sound that she makes. I could actually put a picture of April on her eyes if I really wanted to. Maybe I wanted to express just how much she loved April and put two little Aprils in her eyes. But here's a couple little fun things I did. So imagine, if you will, that you can do any sort of like hokey pokey, macarena, any sort of dance really. Maybe maybe you can do like a cool dance move that Misty uh, wants to do here. So I'm simply connected to the internet here. And now I'm running skills. So this is just a JavaScript and a JSON file. And there's Misty singing a little bit. Here's a little bit of conf confusing reaction. And we got this one, a little giggle here. Huh? That's how I feel a lot when I'm looking at a new programming language that I'm not used to. Um, <laughs> but Misty has a bunch of sensors and bumpers on her. So in addition to triggering different things from her various buttons, we also have capabilities to do any sort of facial recognition. She can recognize different items in images. So as April was talking about earlier, um, the Face API and a bunch of Azure Cognitive Services can be used with Misty. So you can actually identify a bunch of different cool things that she's doing. So April, I I'm going to move it on over to your code so we can get into all of the fun new JavaScript that you just learned. Yes, so what you're looking at right now on the screen is going to be the command center that you can use to teach Misty how to do different things. So with the command center, I think it's really great because you don't have to enter any code in here. So it's really friendly and approachable from that respect. As you can see here, I can do different things to change her expressions. So as Chloe mentioned, I know that you can also change her eyes and you can do that here with image, for example. You can add audio. And I mentioned during the slide deck that she can also move. So you can control that here as well, which is pretty cool. And there's an app that you can also download and you can use that to drive her as well. And I know now, personally, oh, I'm a very visual person. So this is basically a visualization of Misty's SDK, right? Yeah, and it's really, really helpful, especially if you're just getting started with her. Now, after I got Misty, I did start with the command center, but then I ended up progressing over to the skill runner. And with the skill runner, this is where you can come and upload Misty skills. So that way you can run them on her and you can program your skill either using the JavaScript SDK or the .NET. I am using JavaScript for the skill that I wrote for her, but this is what that skill runner looks like. Now, what you can do in here is um, you, can, you can upload them here. You can also generate JSON meta files, which is going to be super helpful because you need both a JavaScript file as well as a JSON meta file uh, when you upload skills for Misty. Down here in Manage is where you can come in and actually run those skills for Misty. So that's pretty awesome. I spent a lot of time in the skill runner in the command center this morning playing around with different dance moves and, and various things that Misty can do. So it's a great way to kind of test out your features before putting them live in the robot. Yes, it is. And so as for code, so we can walk through what it is that we programmed her to do and just get some understanding there. So starting off with the Azure component, what we've done using speech to text is we are looking for an utterance to be said. And once that's said, we have some conditional logic here. And yes, this is in Python. And once that has been sent to Azure, what we're going to get back is a string. And then from there, we check if that string is equal to take photo. If it is, then it will invoke the function, which is selfie. Now, 
When you create the MISTI skills, as I mentioned, you can do that in JavaScript or .NET. I did it in JavaScript and I did it here in Visual Studio Code. What's awesome is that there is a MISTI JavaScript extension available in Visual Studio Code that makes coding for MISTI um, easier, I would say. It was super helpful using that as I was creating MISTI. But for the actual JavaScript file that we have here, as you can see, we're starting off with the selfie, fun the selfie function. And so what's going to happen is that once this is invoked, Misty is going to play audio and it's going to be a sound clip that she has inside of her that says, OK, April, get ready for your picture. From there, her color is going to change to pink. And then after that, she's going to display on her eyes a camera. Then after that, we're going to play an audio sound that sounds like a camera shutter. And then from there, she's going to take the picture. Now we have some, some arguments here that we filled in and the first is going to be selfie.jpg. So that's going to be a JPEG image and that's going to be the name of the image that gets saved to Misty after she takes the photo of me. We have our resolution. So we have 1280 by 960. Then we also have two at the end, which is false and true. False is going to be um, indicative of whether she actually displays that photo on her screen. And then true is going to be for overriding any file that might already be saved on her that's called selfie.jpg. After she's done taking that picture, her color is going to change to white. And so we added that color in just to ensure that she's pink when she's going to take it, and then it's back to white when she's done. And then after that, to give us some more visual cues that she's done what we've wanted her to do, we do display some joy eyes on her display. And then after that, she switches to the default eyes, which is what you've you've probably seen on my on my screen as well as Chloe's. After that, she's going to play a confirmation. She's going to say cute picture. I'm sending it to Chloe now. And then after she does that, down below here, we have a callback function. And what this is doing is going to is going to uh, get that data from that picture. Now I mentioned earlier in the slides that we need to send this image to Imgur in order to get the media link that we're going to pass into the Twilio message body. So we need to get that data from that picture and this is going to be within um, base 64. So once we have that, we have a function for upload image that uploads that image to Imgur. As you can see here, it's being uploaded to an album we're going to send an external request and then from there we're going to do another callback function here, which is where we can get that data from the JSON response. And then after that, the send picture function will be invoked. Once that occurs, we're then going to send the message to Chloe. Down here, as you can see within the function send picture, we have some variables starting off with the from number, which is going to be my Twilio number that it's coming from. The two number is going to be Chloe's number. And then after that, we have our Twilio credentials, which would be the account ID and the auth token. These would essentially be stored in environment variables if you were creating something like this for your own and you want to share it with others to try out. And then we also have the message body here, which in my case, it says, hi, Chloe. Now down below, we have the JSON body. And so we pulled in those variables from um, above that I just mentioned here into the JSON body. And then finally, what's here that enables us to send that MMS message is going to be that media URL. So we're going to use git here to get that image link that Misty stored from the Imgur upload. And then from there, we're going to verify our Twilio credentials. We're going to do another external request. And then from there, Chloe should receive the message. So Chloe, I think Missy and I are ready to try this out. Ooh, I'm so excited to demo it. For those of you who are kind of going, huh? Or in Misty terms, <laughs> <laughs> this will be, this is it for all of that stuff. If maybe you were last and maybe you don't know JavaScript so well, now we're going to demo exactly what we just walked through in all that code, which seemed like a lot of code, but it's going to send a picture to me via text. I'm super, super excited. Let's do it. <laughs> Yay. Awesome. Okay, cool. So let me make sure that Misty is, is good and ready. All right. So far, so good. And let's give it a try. The joy is of robot parenthood. Oh, 
That's not <laughs> Okay, April, get ready for your picture. Cute picture. <gasps> I'm sending it to Chloe now. Um, and she compliments you. I'm going to program yeah. my Misty to compliment myself every morning immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a text. Who could this be? Let me just open my phone here. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's April. That is... <laughs> So cool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm so excited to see folks who maybe saw this stream and are thinking of the cool, fun projects that they're going to want to do with, with their Misties. Um, so before we, we get ahead of ourselves here, I want to make sure that people have the resources so they know how they can get started. So April, what are some ways that folks can get started maybe programming their own Misty? Yes, so the first thing we have here is the speech service docs. And so if you follow this AKA link, which is aka.ms slash speech service, this will take you to the landing page for speech service docs. This is where you can access all the different quick starts as well as any of the API reference for what's available within speech service. Next, we have the Misty Robotics website. So again, if you want to learn more about Misty, uh, what she can do, what she's capable of, how other people might be using Misty as well. And to find that documentation that we've shared, you can go to www.mistyrobotics.com. And then finally, we have a link here for Twilio. And so as I mentioned earlier, if you want to give Twilio a try, sign up, you will receive a credit so you can try out any of their APIs. There's a lot of cool things you can do with Twilio. I know between the both of us, Chloe, we've created a ton. So you can find more information specifically about SMS by going to twilio.com slash SMS. And those are the lovely resources that I have for everyone today. All righty. Well, now I think it's time for some Q&A. Um, here are my Twitter handle and um, April's Twitter handle as well if you want to get in contact with us or just follow us to see what cool, fun things we're building with Misty. I know after build, I'm going to be doing some fun little projects with her. So just so you all have an idea, before we get into Q&A here, um, we really just touched the surface with what Misty can do. There's a lot of really cool cognitive services you can add on to her. Obviously, we sent text messages through this, but there's so many capabilities Misty has. Um, I, this is this is a pop question, pop quiz question here, April. But I'm going to share real quick my favorite uh, Misty skill. If you want to share yours before we dive into Q and A, um, I discovered by going onto Misty's website that you can actually program Misty to see through her eyes. So Misty has a camera and she can drive around. So maybe if there is a issue with safety in a building, or maybe you just want to to go tour a museum, but not physically be in the museum. Maybe you live in California and you go want to go see the Met. Um, you can actually use Misty to drive around and take a look at everything through the eyes of little Misty here. So April, I would love to hear what are maybe some projects or cool features that you're really, really excited to play with. I'm excited to start using Misty more as a voice assistant, I would say. I have a really huge love for voice assistants, and we have probably more than we really need in our house. <laughs> so it's great now to be able to have this device that's actually mobile that we could use throughout today where I can ask questions and get responses back. But even more important, I'm glad we have this skill that we just taught her with taking photos because now as I am playing dress up in my own closet, I can have her send you pictures, Chloe. So I think that's pretty cool. Oh my goodness. It feels like we're, I watched so many movies when I was growing up that involved technology and tech and fashion kind of things like in pop culture. So this is very reminiscent of the digital closet from, from Clueless. <laughs> so in a lot of ways, I feel like uh, Misty is helping me live a little bit of reality of, of all the cool sci-fi pop culture tech I got to see on screen. Someone requested that we share our Twitter handles on here again. So here they are for folks who want to take those down. Um, and if we have any questions, we'll definitely take them. Um, I do see one. Yeah, go for it. I can answer for you. So is the sensor bridge on Misty's forehead and Azure Connect? Connect, how is it connect? Connect. <laughs> so no, this is not an Azure Connect that's on Misty's head. However, if you are interested to learn more about her, um, 
for parts, I would say check out missyrobotics.com. Yes. And uh, as we kind of showcased a little bit um, earlier, there's a bunch of customizable things that you can do with Misty's movement. So as I kind of demonstrated earlier, and I'll show you all again, um, I'm moving Misty's head. So what's really cool about Misty is it's not just an up and down or left and right movement. There's a lot of different tilts you can get really expressive with Misty. So by just changing what's on her eyes, moving the position of her head and even her arms, you can do so many different expressive things. Um, my background is in theater, musical theater specifically. So it's really fun to, I think of it almost like choreography, like putting a dance together with my Misty. So it's this interesting combination of crafting, dance, performance. And as April mentioned, there's a really fun video online, definitely worth checking out of Misty and I doing a little musical duet. She's a great singer, great performer. I feel like a stage mom right now. <laughs> so there um, was um, yeah. another question uh, with regards to if Misty can detect cats and images rather than human faces. That is so a great question. <laughs> it is a great question. And I would say it depends on which third party offering you're using to do that with. I know with Azure, we do have vision service as well, which also falls under cognitive services. We do have um, the ability for you to train your model online by uploading images of different cats in this example. And if you were to do that, um, you could use that and then have Misty actually look at a cat to determine uh, the, the amount of uh, accuracy for that. So that would be an option if you're interested in, um, in using one of our cognitive services to train her to detect cats. Yeah, and you can get really specific with that. I know um, for me specifically, when I'm using different uh, vision recognition or facial recognition, I have very, very big eyes and I wear a lot of colors. So I'm usually identified as, as a little girl. So I always feel like Misty's complimenting me. She's like, I see a little girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Misty. I super appreciate it. <laughs> Such a compliment. I'm like, I am 30, ma'am. Um, <laughs> there was well, a question yeah. regarding um, have we have we utilized any third party hardware to expand Misty's capabilities? Now, I, I think I can speak for both of us, Chloe, in that neither of us have personally done it. However, within Misty Robotics on the website, there should be an area where you can access their uh, community boards, if you will. There may be some information in there for you to see if someone else within the Misty Robotics community has has done that. So that's a possibility with regards to a starting point to see what might be capable. Absolutely, and I'll just share real quick. A lot of Misty's parts are magnetic. So for example, this little antenna here, and you can actually 3D print custom things to add on to Misty. So for me, I have my eyes on a 3D printer that I really want. I want to make a little bow for her hair, kind of similar to mine, <laughs> put it on the side of my Misty. So there's a lot of really fun um, recipes out there for um, building different things that you can attach to Misty. Um, Misty, I've seen her pull little wagons full of things before. I want her to, to tote around my bubbly water, bring me some hydration while I'm doing different talks. <laughs> April and Chloe, I think we have time for one more question. So there was one earlier. Uh, live microphones are spooky. Does speech service store recordings long term and use them for model training data? That is a very good question. That is one that I would need to look up to confirm. I have typically have done things with our vision service. I'm just getting started doing more with speech service, but that is something that might be available on our website within the speech services. And if not, definitely always feel free to reach out through the team, whether it's through the, the GitHub issues at the bottom of the documentation or come find me over on Twitter and I will try to get that answer for you. Amazing. All right. Well, let's let's see if Misty has any parting words. She looks a little confused right now, but Misty, how do you think that went? Do you think the people are, are excited? Yeah, she's she's stoked. That means she's stoked. In Misty, Misty language, I think that means thumbs up, right, April? Yes, it does. I like her hard eyes. All righty. Awesome. Thank you so much, April and Chloe. It was so exciting to learn more about Misty and how you can program her to do fun things Thanks with your BFF. Before we end this session, I just want to remind everyone to please fill out the short and anonymous survey so we can learn how you enjoyed this session. Um, there is a link to that in the chat. 
Uh, and also be sure to check out the other resources that we've listed here, like aka.ms slash students at Bill to see more resources from this session and all the others, uh, as well as just the other great resources of how you can continue to learn more uh, and get involved in different things. So thank you everyone for being here and another thank you to April and Chloe. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you everyone.